Trade Tree fans, let me tell you about one of the most underrated fleecings of all time. You know Dominic Kashuk, one of the best goalies of all time, and how he was drafted by the Buffalo Sabres, and how he was a rookie with the Buffalo Sabres? No, you don't know that. And the reason you don't know that is it's not true. The Buffalo Sabres got Dominic Kashuk, arguably the best goalie of all time, in a trade. And the team who they got Hashik from did terribly in the trade, and then did better than any team in their position had any business doing, and still failed miserably. It's time for the long overdue Dominic Hashik trade tree. Let's find out how the Buffalo Sabres pried one of the best goalies of all time away from the Chicago Blackhawks. So let's set the scene. It's 1992. During the 91-92 season, the Blackhawks had two goalies for the most part. Their starter was Ed Belfour, their backup was Dominic Hasek. Now, if you're the Chicago Blackhawks, you think you're pretty smart because you got this guy, this kid named Ed Belfour, who was undrafted when you found him. He played for the University of North Dakota, followed by two seasons in the IHL with the Saginaw Hawks, a real team that is real. Wait a sec, Bruce Cassidy played with Ed Belfour in the IHL? Anyway, not only did you find this guy who's a serviceable NHL player, he's a lot more than a serviceable NHL player. Because in 1991, Ed Belfour not only won the Calder Trophy as the NHL's Rookie of the Year, but he also won the Vesna Trophy as the best goalie in the league. Then there's your backup, this guy named Dominic Hasek. And he's okay. I mean, frankly, he's a late bloomer because the Chicago Blackhawks drafted this guy out of the Czech Republic in 1983, 199th overall in the 10th round. And during the 91-92 season, Hasek played 20 games and had an 893 save percentage. Eh. I mean, Ed Belfour only had it 894, but it was with a far heavier workload, almost triple the games. And don't put too much weight on the save percentage because it was the early 90s, which was basically the late 80s when it comes to the NHL. Scoring was still way up. So you're the Chicago Blackhawks, what do you do? You have Ed Belfour, who is a Calder winner, a Vesna winner, already he's your starting goaltender he's a hall of famer in the making and on the other side of him you have a goalie who you drafted eight years before his nhl debut who's just kind of a guy you trade that guy and they did the trade was dominic hashik going to the buffalo sabers for stefan beauregard and a fourth round pick in 1993. Before we continue the epic story of Dominic Hasek, we can do the entire Chicago Blackhawks side of the trade tree. Because, I mean, let's let's be honest, if you get Stefan Beauregard and a fourth round pick in 1993 for one of the best, if not the best goalies of all time, you suck, you, you made a really bad trade. You got a guy who the Blackhawks didn't even use and a fourth round pick. Your odds of getting anything of any value are slim to none. Well, in spite of themselves, the Blackhawks actually did all right. How did Stefan Beauregard do with the Chicago Blackhawks? He didn't do anything because he was flipped days after they got him in this trade. Stay with me for a sec. June 15th, 1992, Stefan Beauregard is a goalie for the Winnipeg Jets. He is traded to the Buffalo Sabres. Later that summer, the Buffalo Sabres trade Beauregard to the Chicago Blackhawks, and then the Blackhawks send him back to the Jets in exchange for forward Christian Rutu. Now, Rutu actually wasn't a bad Blackhawk. We always talk about this in trade trees. Service time with a team matters. Games played matter. And the Blackhawks got 158 games use out of Rutu, parts of three seasons, 90 points over those 158 games. Then in 1995, the Blackhawks trade Rutu to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for another forward named Murray Craven. Now Murray Craven put up Almost an identical amount of games played, 157 games played, 89 points. Who knows if he played one more game, he would have been dead even. So between Christian Rutu and Murray Craven combined, the Blackhawks have already gotten over 300 games played out of this trade tree. That's not bad. Unfortunately, this branch of the trade tree stops very abruptly because Murray Craven is then traded to the San Jose Sharks for a player and a pick. A sixth round pick, as a matter of fact, that the Blackhawks used to select Yari Vukala 
and he played almost all of his hockey in Finland and never played for the Blackhawks in the NHL. The player the Blackhawks got was named Petri Varis, and he did play in the NHL with the Blackhawks for one game. That's it. So that branch is done, which only leaves us with the fourth round pick. In 1993, with the 90th overall pick in the fourth round, the Chicago Blackhawks select a player by the name of Eric Daze. Now, me and the digital team here at Sportsnet working on trade trees, when we were talking about this trade tree idea, all of them had the same reaction. Who the heck is Eric Daze? And that's when I realized I'm old because how dare you even ask that question? Eric Daze's light did not burn very long in the National Hockey League, but when it was on, it burned very bright. He was nominated for the Calder Trophy in 1996 with Daniel Alfredson, who ended up winning the thing, and former first overall pick Ed Jovanovski. He was named to the 95-96 All-Rookie Team with, again, Daniel Alfredson and Peter Sikora as the forwards. He was the only rookie in 95-96 to score 30 goals. He was the MVP of the 2002 NHL All-Star Game. In that season, Daze just happened to score 38 goals and 70 points, both career highs, and that is in the heart of the dead puck era. No one was scoring, and this dude was flirting with 40 goals. Eric Daze was a beast and a big power forward. Left wing for the Chicago Blackhawks, six foot six. 230 pounds are you kidding a six foot six 230 pound forward who could put up 38 goals and 70 points who is not lining up around the block for this guy problem was after that amazing 2001 2002 season Daze fell off very quickly because back injuries are brutal. In 2002-2003, in 55 games, he had 44 points. That's not bad. It's not quite where he was at. The next season, in 54 games, he had 44 points. It's not bad, but not very good on the games played front. 03-04, he had just 19 games played, 11 points still. 04-05, he had no games played because nobody did because there was a season-long lockout, followed by a one-game comeback attempt in 0506. Less than 12 minutes played, zero shots on goal, minus two, and a penalty taken. Eric Daze, one of the NHL's brightest stars of the late 90s and early 2000s, was retired at 30 years of age. Well, he wasn't officially retired at 30, but that was his final NHL game. He was around the Blackhawks organization for a number of years, but he just never quite made it back. But overall, 601 games played for the Blackhawks organization in the regular season, 226 goals and 398 points. Eric Daze was an amazing player for the Blackhawks when he was in the lineup. So wait a sec, the Blackhawks got nearly a thousand games played from this trade tree and they got a guy who was a Calder nominee and an NHL All-Star. There's no way they lost this deal, right? And yeah, so what? They traded away Dominic Hasek, who cares? You know who won the Vesna Trophy in 1993, the year after the Blackhawks got rid of Dominic Hasek? Ed Balfour with his second Vesna Trophy of his career. These guys are gonna be just fine. Tell you what, Buffalo, you take the Dominator, ooh. In his first season with the Sabres, Hasek didn't even play 30 games. He only played 28 and he had an 11, 10, and four record. Those four were ties, by the way, because the 90s, and he had an 896 save percentage because the early 90s. In fact, Hasek was part of a goalie trio that year for the Buffalo Sabres. Him and Grant Fuhr and Darren Pupa the 90th of 90 trios in net. And then it's like a switch went off. During the 93-94 season, Dominic Hasek simply decided, all right, I'm the best goalie in the NHL now, and I think I'm gonna do that for the next better part of the decade. He played 58 games for the Sabres, had a record of 30, 20, and six, and a 930 save percentage. Seven shutouts, otherworldly, he wins the Vezina Trophy in 1994. And then he also won it in 1995. He should have won it in 1996, but instead the trophy went to a player named Jim Carey, whose nickname was the Net Detective. I'm not kidding, Google it. But Hasek had superior numbers to Carey in 
basically every statistical category for goalies. Hasek must have been grumpy about losing the Vesna that year because he decided to take it out on everybody by winning the Vesna, the Lester B. Pearson, which today is now known as the Ted Lindsay, and the Hart as league MVP. Not satisfied, the following season, Hasek did it again, winning the Vesna, the Pearson, and the Hart as league MVP. Before winning just the Vesna in 99, taking a year off in 2000 to go, all right, someone else win it, before promptly winning the Vesna again in 2001. This is what I'm talking about with Dominic Hasek and being the best goalie of all time. There are arguments to be made for other guys. Ken Dryden is a guy who doesn't get enough love in this conversation. He essentially, uh, never lost. There's Martin Brodeur, who always won. And there's Patrick Waugh, who has an unbelievable resume. Unbelievable amount of accolades and unbelievable amount of championships. But between 94 and 2001, I don't think any goalie in the history of the NHL has ever had a better run. Just an undeniable run. No one was scoring goals during this time. And Dominic Hasek might have been a big part of it. And what was amazing is no one was scoring goals in the dead puck era, the clutch and grab dead puck era. And the goalies were massive. They all had pads that were way too big for them, way too big for, for life, basically. These ridiculous shoulder pads. Go look up the shoulder pads that some of these guys were wearing. They were illegal in very short order. Meanwhile, Dominic Hasek's got the little bubble helmet on that he never really went away from, and all his pads looked like he bought them used. He wasn't a butterfly, he wasn't a stand-up, he was a stop the puck and figure out the rest later, and then he did! Especially 97 and 98 high. The dude won six Vesnas in an eight year span. He won the heart in 97, Olympic gold in 98, and then the heart in 98. It's the best year over year streak any goalie has ever had. I don't know who else is in the conversation. Maybe Wah, maybe Dryden. I don't even think Brodeur finds a way into that conversation. I don't. In his nine seasons with the Buffalo Sabres, Dominic Hasek played 491 games. His record was 234, 170, and 70, but it wasn't a losing record because the 70 part were ties. Dominic Hasek was the argument against continuous overtime because he would simply decide, you know what, I don't feel like allowing a goal tonight. And his teammates in front of him would say, you know what, funny you should say that, we don't feel like scoring. You know, because late 90s. If there was continuous OT during Dominic Hasek's tenure with the Buffalo Sabres, they would have consistently been playing seven, eight, and nine period games. Over those 491 games with the Buffalo Sabres, Hasek had a 920 six save percentage how many goalies are that good ever for like 20 games like a 20 game stretch of time he did that for nearly 500 games over basically a decade and added 55 shutouts the man was made of stretch armstrongs and plato and slinkies 13,000 308 games as a goalie for the Buffalo Sabres. Dominic Hasek was the dominator. What the, 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 one of the moments that Owen Nolan, who was an amazing hockey player, is remembered for the most, was scoring on Hasek at an All-Star game. You know why? No one can score on Hasek at the All-Star game! Because you know how players don't really try at the All-Star game? Yeah, Hasek never got that memo! Hilariously, well, maybe not that hilarious if you're a Buffalo Sabres fan, Dominic Hasek was once scored on in the Stanley Cup Final. He had a Stanley Cup winning goal scored against him, that shouldn't have counted! Because Brett Hall's toe is in the crease. And then someone will explain to you how that it actually should have counted. Shut up! It was a dumb rule. They should have all counted that year, frankly. And just as unpleasantly for Sabres fans, Dominic Hasek and his tenure with the Sabres eventually came to an end. Where he went to Detroit with the Red Wings, the early 2000s Red Wings, and had <clears throat> a record of 114, 39, and 19. Is that real? Oh, and he was a career 919 in the playoffs with the Red Wings and won a cup. That's dumb. That's that's stupid is what that that's stupid. But for trade tree purposes, perhaps I should tell you who Dominic Hasek was traded for. The Buffalo Sabres received Vyacheslav Kozlov and a first round pick in 2002. Here's the problem with trading Dominic Hasek to a really good team for a first round pick. Um, that first round pick is gonna be the last pick of the first round. 
because the team that you trade hashing to is going to win the cup. And that's exactly what happened. The Detroit Red Wings of 2002 are revered as one of the best teams of all time. Certainly one of the best teams of the modern era. And they won the Stanley Cup, believe it or not. So the trade was for Vyacheslav Kozlov, who was a big part of the Red Wings of the 97 and 98 Cup wins, and the 30th pick in 2002. Kozlov only played 38 games for the Sabres, putting up 22 points. And the Buffalo Sabres did a very smart thing with Kozlov. A very smart thing in general for any team in the early 2000s. The Buffalo Sabres wanted to make a trade, so they called the Atlanta Thrashers. Hello, did you make a trade with the Atlanta Thrashers? Congratulations, you won. There's a reason they're not there anymore. Yeah, because no one went to their games. Yeah, and why did no one go to their games? Because they sucked! Like, from scratch, they sucked. Then there was one year where they didn't suck, and they got swept in the first round, and then they continued to suck. Anyway, here's the trade. Vyacheslav Kozlov, along with a second-round pick in 2002, the 41st overall pick, to the Atlanta Thrashers in exchange for a second-round pick in 2002, 31st overall, and a third round pick in 2002, 82nd overall. That third round pick in 2002 was used on a player named John Adams. He just played in the AHL and the ECHL, so that amounts to nothing, so that's easy. But that second round pick in 2002, oh, that was flipped. Because the Sabres took that second round pick and another second round pick and sent those two picks to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for Jochen Hecht. I should mention the two picks that the Oilers got ended up being goaltender Jeff Delorier and Jarrett Stoll, so not a bad little deal for them. But in exchange, the Buffalo Sabres get a mainstay of their roster for a number of years. Jochen Hecht, for his generation, was one of the best German-born hockey players of all time, at the time. With the Buffalo Sabres, Hecht had 613 games played. 345 career points, so not a mind-blowing offensive producer, but a little over half a point a game, and on more than one occasion, he received at least one Selkie vote. Because if you play solid defense in front of Dominic Hasek, the other team's not going to score, and on most nights, they didn't. After the lockout shortened 2013 season, Heck played three more seasons in Germany before retiring. Which leaves us with one final branch on this trade tree. Remember, the Sabres had the 30th overall pick, courtesy of the Red Wings. They flipped that. It was the 30th overall pick in 2002 along with the rights for Mike Pandolfo to Columbus in exchange for the 20th overall pick in 2002. With that pick, the Sabres select Danny Paye. Now a lot of you are going to remember Danny Paye as a member of the Boston Bruins, and he was a member of the Boston Bruins, that's where he played most of his hockey, but he played 195 games for the Buffalo Sabres, putting up 77 points. When he was eventually traded to the Boston Bruins, it was for a third round pick. Unfortunately, that third round pick never amounted to a player who played in the NHL. He just played in the A and the E, which is a much higher level of hockey than any of us will probably ever play. Unless you're a former pro watching this right now. Hmm? It's, oh yeah, do you feel seen? The computer's talking to you, do you feel seen? Anyway, you know what's amazing? The Chicago Blackhawks did better in this deal than probably any of you remember. Probably better than they had any business doing. And they still got absolutely wrecked. Like, in this trade tree, Danny Paye and Jochen Heck combining for over 800 games played for the Sabres, like, that, that would be enough. That would be enough to call this at least even, if not a Buffalo Sabres win. But the fact that it all starts with Dominic Hashik going on the best run any goalie has ever had is larceny. But are the Blackhawks dumb for making the decision that they did? No. Dude, think about it. You have two goalies who are the exact same age with Dominic Hasek and Ed Belfour. They are literally four months apart in age. One of them just won Rookie of the Year and Goalie of the Year, and the other one is making his NHL debut eight years after you picked him in the 10th round. The Blackhawks made the logical bet with this deal. They did. It was the logical bet. Bet. And if you ever watch Dominic Hasek play growing up, you'll know that logic does not apply to Dominic Hasek. Simply one of the best goalies of all time, and so is Ed Belfour. It's, it's unbelievable that the Blackhawks come out of all of this with a Hockey Hall of Fame goalie in Ed Belfour and still lose. Like, handily. <laughs> so there it is, the tale of how Dominic Hasek became a Buffalo Sabre and a 10th round pick from the Czech Republic 
became the best or one of the best goalies of all time. So what'd you think of this trade tree? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. Um, be careful when you trade away your backup.